You know, whether you fish rivers and streams, salt water, or lakes like I do, there's always some special flies, flies with that special name. Let me show you one of my favorites. Hello everyone, my name is Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and the constant chaos that is my fly tying bench. If you visited my channel before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I provide fly tying and fly fishing video content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. Today we're tying the Takarek Special. Now if you've ever visited or heard of the productive trout lakes located in southwest Manitoba, chances are you've heard of the Takarek Special. It's nothing more than a variation of a woolly bugger. Well over the years my friends and I have taken this woolly bugger variation, we've tweaked it and modified it, removed the hackle, the core colors remain the same, but now we tie it on small jig hooks using either a sequin pin or tungsten bead or the new tungsten head turner beads so we can fish this fly balanced under an indicator. Now if you stick around until the end of the video I'm going to show you how I tie this fly on my leader using a clinch knot and the new tungsten head turner beads because that's the version I'm going to show you today so it hangs horizontally so you can fish it just like I do. So now let's join me at the bench and I'll show you how I tie this version of the Takarik Special. Okay, so let's tie the Takarik Special. This is a variation. The original Takarik Special was basically a woolly bugger with green chenille, black hackle, black tail. And we have evolved it a fair bit, but out of uh, respect to its roots, um, we still affectionately call this the Takarik Special. But when you see it, it's kind of nowhere near the materials. We just simplified it and used other materials and it's worked well. So into the jaws of the vise, We've got a Daiichi 4640, size 12. You could tie these on a 10, a 12, or even a 14. And you could use a slotted bead, or in this case, we're using some of the new uh, tungsten head turner beads that we get from Canadian Lama. This is a gold 764 bead right here. And these beads, it's hard, I'll pull it back a little bit, but you can see, get my dubbing needle to point at it here, this is a more concave side of the bead and this is just kind of the taper. So what you want to do is put the concave side of the bead facing forward over the hook eye because what this will do is kind of go over top of the jig, sort of the down eye of this jig hook and protrude the bead forward. And when you tie this fly on using a clinch knot tight to the hook eye, this fly will suspend, if you choose to use it under an indicator, horizontally. It'll balance. So we're just going to get this started. We're going to tie in some black or olive thread. The choice is up to you. Just going to get that started right be behind the bead. Use, you can use 6 aught. Uh, I happen to be using some 12 aught uh, Semperfy Nano Silk. We're just going to get a good base of thread down here. Right down halfway between the, the point and the crushed down barb. We're going to come back right up near the hook eye. And as in so many flies that I like to tie these baby or mini leech style smaller leeches, instead of using traditional marabou, which I would do on a larger fly, I'm going to use the base of a black schlappen feather. Okay, so I'm going to use this stuff here, this soft flu that most of us never use or throw out. We always use this portion of the feather. So I'm going to come up here and you can see here at this point on the feather it's kind of uneven so I'm just going to strip off until I get to a point that all of this, about an inch of it or so, is all approximately the same length. And I'm just going to stand these fibers up by pulling on them. That'll align their tips. And then I'm just going to come in and strip and kind of roll and strip and roll until I remove the fibers that I want. So I've got this nice little clump of marabou, um, marabou-like slap and feathers. So nice and fine fibered. There's a few irregular ones. We can pinch those little ones out. And we're just going to gather those up and tie in a tail that is about the length of the shank. So from the bead to the bend here, that's what we're going to tie in. I'm going to transfer that measurement 
there, my left thumb and forefinger, slide my right thumb and forefinger right where that thread is hanging, come in, re-grip, and trim that waist right there. That gives me a nice tie-in point. I'm just going to come around with a couple loose wraps, get that secured in, and then just continue to hold the material, and lift and hold the material under tension, and as I secure it back, it's going to align itself right on top of the shank. It's not going to twist and spin. Then we got our tail. I'm going to come up. There's a few little robe fibers. I can pinch those off. Stroke that down, but I got a nice little gathered tail. Very fine fibered to match sort of the smaller size of the fly. And the rest of the fly is just a dubbed body. So we're just going to come up. I'm going to cover all this up. Go to about the midpoint. Form a dubbing loop. Bring that tying thread back up. I don't need a very big loop. We don't have a big fly here. Reel in the thread here, and I'm just going to secure that. And you'll notice as I go further back, this is going to come nice and tight, and that's what we want. We want our thread at the loop right tight together because we're not using any dubbing wax, we're just using thread tension to hold the dubbing in place. Because I don't want the dubbing wax that the, the reason I don't like using dubbing wax much is just my fear that it's going to mat down. Uh, some of the fibers. We're trying to get a nice spiky uh, body on this. For the body on this fly, we're going to use some Hairs Ice Dub from Hairline Dubbing. Great stuff. It's a blend of Ice Dub and, and Hairs Mask. So it's kind of soft and sparkly all together. And we're just going to take a pinch out of the clump, open the loop at the bottom, and slide that up into position and just build our loop with little pinches of dubbing not very much you can remember dub dubbing is kind of a cumulative thing so you want just a sparse pinch all the way up because we're going to brush this out so it breathes and flows and is translucent it just really attracts fish so don't don't overdub you don't have to put the whole package uh, I'm sure the folks at Hairline would like it if you did, but uh, you don't have to put the whole package into the dubbing loop. Sparse is best. Almost you can see through it. You see that clump there, you can see right through it. It's not that not that dense at all. And you're trying to get a dubbing loop that's, you know, I'll just pull it off to the side here. You can see it's pretty even all along the length here. There's no bare spots. And we're just going to start spinning slowly. And as that thread grabs it and twists it, then I can give it a good hearty spin. And when those fibers radiate out 90 degrees, or if you let go of the, the tension on the loop, there's kind of a bit of an elastic spring back. That's when you know you're, you're nice and tight. So I'm going to take this uh, dubbing brush and just carefully pick out all the way up and down the loop any fibers that have kind of clumped up. Sometimes that hair's ear component of this dubbing will cause it to clump up a little bit. We're just going to pick all that out. All right, so I'm going to put a couple of wraps right at the base of the tail. Get it started. And then as I move forward, one wrap adjacent right next door to the other, close touching turns. And using my left thumb and forefinger, whoops, that sometimes happens. It slipped off the dubbing loop. That's nothing to worry about. Just grab a pair of nearby hackle pliers and keep on moving and just keep winding forward just like this sweeping those fibers back all the way up and I'm just going to wind this right tight up against that bead Did that well. And then a couple of wraps over the top, a couple of wraps in front, trim away the excess, pull away some of those fibers, clean that area up, and take some super glue. Coat that thread. Sweep those fibers back. Get that coated thread right in that tie-off area, right behind the bead. And then a three to five turn whip finish. Close it off. 
trim away the excess thread. And we'll take our dubbing brush again and really give this an aggressive on all four sides. Underneath, near side, really tease those fibers out. And again, that dubbing brush, making that dubbing noodle, just gives it a very durable body. This dubbing brush is doing far more damage than te fish's teeth can do. And just get those fibers back. That's why we didn't have decided not to put any sparkle in the tail, because you're just going to get those ice dub fibers to blend back into the tail and give the give it all the flash it needs. There you have it. Our version, our updated version of the Takeric Special. It's come a little way since the Wooly Bugger version with the crystal chenille body and black hackle, but this version is as deadly or even more deadly, especially when you hang it under an indicator. Again, using a clinch knot tight to the hook eye, a little bit back of center, and this fly will hang horizontally. And of course, you could use a non slip loop knot and cast and retrieve this fly as well. So, as I mentioned in the intro, if you want this fly to hang horizontally, what you're going to do is take a clinch knot, and you can see how it's sort of vertical. I'm going to cinch it a little bit back of center, and that's going to encourage this fly to hang horizontally. Again, clinch knot against back, just if, if vertical is straight up the hook eye then a little bit back of center and that's going to hang horizontally or horizontal enough that the fish won't mind. So that's the beauty of these head turner beads. We're sort of eliminating the need for the traditional tungsten bead and sequin pin. You've got a fly here that you can fish as a jig fly. You could Euronymph with this fly. You could cast and retrieve using a non-slip loop knot or you could hang it vertically. Just remember to use this clinch knot with your favorite tippet. Here for me it's the Rio Floroflex Plus Strong. Tip it, and away you go. Happy fishing.